Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to discuss scalars. So in nearly every video where I'm demonstrating a model developed using PCA or K-means or DBSCAN, I'm usually using some sort of scalar in the background to help me control the mean and variance of my variables. So imagine you have a feature whose mean value is a million and you have another feature whose mean value is one. Those differences in scales can really impact the model and make it more difficult for the model to detect those underlying patterns and thus could skew your results significantly. By scaling your data, you can press those variables to be within the same range and makes it much easier for your models to then detect the underlying pattern and produce significantly better results. So let me show you by illustrating what this looks like. I'm using the make blobs module to create a data set and then I'm also skewing some of the variables. If we look at df.describe to understand a little bit more what we've got, we can see that, for instance, feature A has a mean value of negative 382, while on the other end, we have feature D and E, which have mean values much closer to zero. And so that difference in magnitude can really skew the performance of the model. So if we look at this and run PCA without scaling, we have two clusters where we should have three distinct clusters. So we have this cluster on the right that's well separated from this, um, these, this cluster on the left where we now have our overlapping blue and green dots. Now, simply by scaling the data, so let me copy this here and run the separate helper function I've, I've written where I actually now scale the data using the standard scaler from scikit-learn. We now have three distinct clusters. And so this, this really illustrates the impact of scaling. And just to demonstrate, I will take my data frame and use the standard scalar. So let's create a new variable called scaled DF, where we create a data frame. And inside the data frame, I will just also run my standard scalar. And then I will fit transform the data frame. And then I will run, uh, let's just call it a PCA scaled DF. And I will pass that to our get PCA no scale data. And when I run that, I want to also create our plot again, just to demonstrate that all we're doing is Z scaling the data to get to this point. And so now you can see, even when we run our PCA without scaling in this function, we already have scaled our data. And so this is really highlights the importance of controlling that mean and variance of the variables. And so here, this is the, the Z scaler or standard scaler in the scikit-learn pre-processing module, where we're just taking each feature variable, subtracting the mean and dividing by the standard deviation. And so this then compresses that data um, to have a, a mean value of zero. Now, generally when you're working with uh, features that are computed from mean, if you have several outliers that can significantly impact the performance of your scaler and thus your model. So there's several other methods for scaling data that could be better suited for different types of data, where we now have min max scaler, robust scaler, quantile transformer and power transformer. And each of these have their own pros and cons depending on the outcome you're looking for or the model you're looking to build. Now, in the next video, we're going to explore how we can build our own scalers that take advantage of this scikit-learn fit transform method and give us more flexibility to building the exact types of data pipelines we need for machine learning. If you want to be notified when a video is posted, subscribe to the channel. If you've enjoyed this video, like, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.